Hey, it's Camo with the Nashville Access Show presented by Solas North Gulch Apartment, where taste matters. And look at, I get to hold something up again today. That's kind of my favorite thing. Uh, our guest today, Lost Hollow, uh, they've got a brand new album. Is it out now? It'll be out August 26th. Okay, you can shut up until I introduce you now. The album is called <laughs> Looking for Happy. And as we heard, because I asked somebody, it'll be out August 26th. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Lost Hollow. Hi. How, how are you doing? doing? Good, how are you? Uh, Tommy, Lori, uh, first of all, happy birthday. Thank you very much. Uh, Yay. You, you guys are like two of my favorite people. Um, I love the music you make, and you're just cool to hang out with. So, Thank you. welcome to the show. Thanks. Because <laughs> <laughs> I get to do both. I get yes. With you and get music. Um, the new album is called Looking for Happy, and what a great title for an album uh, in a time where we need to all be looking for happy. Very true. Boy, preaching. Boy, yeah. very true. Yeah. yeah. Where did it come from? Yeah. Um, you took the words right out of I did, mind. didn't I? Um, we wrote this song like three years ago, I think, mm -hmm. and my sister um, had been going through some postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. um, I dealt with the, you know, the postpartum and stuff, and she did uh, 100 Days of Happy on Instagram, where every day you post a picture of something simple, mm -hmm. and I fell in love with the concept. And I said, Tom, we should write a song about it. So it's the song for us is that finding the little things that bring mm -hmm. happiness to you. And for when she says she's been through postpartum depression, for those of you that don't know, we have six kids. <laughs> yeah. Which in itself could be depressing. It's, uh, it has its moments. <laughs> we, we, pretty much, we tell people we pretty much have one of everything. Just name a name, we probably have it. Uh, well, you could have all the vowels. Yeah. Yes. And why. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. Yeah. Uh, I think that way. Mm -hmm. um, you guys do a lot of work in the UK. In fact, you seem to be busier in the UK and Ireland and Europe than you are here, uh, as you do as a band. How did that come about? I well, can answer that. Um, it started in 2012. It actually started when I was a kid. I've always been into medieval. I love his medieval history, and so we started going over there uh, to the UK in 2012. And we've, we've probably made two to three trips a year, mm -hmm. every year since then. And it's so funny because I've been to, we've been to so many castles. Uh, I'll ask Brits over there, you know, have you been here? No. And so I'll start telling them about their castles. And uh, <laughs> it's true. <clears throat> but the, they just, you know, they just love music. They love uh, uh, organic music. Um, the, they don't care. If you're if you're 18 and trying to sing songs about life lessons, you know, which is one of my pet peeves. I, yeah. Like I want to learn life lessons from an 18. You know, no offense, but yeah, how about, life yet. How about yeah. you live some life? So, and and over there they're like, we don't care what age you are. You know, just sing. You know, they love great music and, and lyrics and yes, lyrics. Yes, and lyrics. Very true. Yeah, and and the one thing that Nashville uh, absolutely beats you to death in a good way. It really teaches you that the lyrics have got to be amazing. They can't, they can't, you can't just slop some words on there. Although when you slop some words on there, that tends to get radio airplay. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, we really? should try it, but I don't think we can sleep at night. We won't talk about <laughs> broken tree. Yeah. But yeah, the, the lyrics are much more important. And artists from here, when, when they go internationally, not just the UK, but Europe and worldwide, uh, I always say how the audience doesn't just know the words to the single, they know the album. Yeah. They will sing the album back to them. Uh, and it seems even with rock, I, you know, I remember Rush playing in Rio, and they have an instrumental song called YYZ. And 90,000 people in a football stadium down there singing the melody, just humming the melody. It's and, amazing. And, and, who does that? It yeah. doesn't happen here. No. Yeah. No. I'm a Rush geek, so yeah, me too. <laughs> yes, you Rush guys are real. Just... <laughs> yeah. I, I got to meet Alex and uh, Ted. Yeah. And I, when I got when I walked in the meet and greet room, I saw them both walk in, and then I went, Neil doesn't do yeah, meet and greets. Right. And I almost burst into tears. So. Yeah, because you're a drummer. Yeah. And, and 
one of the all-time great drummers of the world. You know, he doesn't. I remember seeing an interview with him. He says, I, "I just don't get it. Why people would want to meet me? Yeah. I, you know, I, it never would occur to me to want to meet my favorite drummers growing up. Yeah. You know? So he just never did them. Yeah. No. Finds it very strange. He, he's 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 very shy, very introverted. Yeah. So I'm a, I'm I fake being an extrovert, but it's <laughs> it's all a lie. <laughs> She's the extrovert. Yeah, you get to hide behind a kit. He does. <laughs> yes. The bigger the kit, the more you get to hide. <laughs> <Why>? <laughs> <laughs> um, so you've toured a lot over there, and you've developed a really good fan base in the UK as mm -hmm. well, and Ireland and Europe. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, we're, uh, Europe is our next venture. We want to we want to get into Netherlands and Germany and oh, France. Them. Yeah, it's just we've got to meet the right people to help us get over we've there. We've got a lot of viewers in, in the Netherlands and Germany as mm -hmm. well. So that's really cool. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, what inspires you? I mean, you're a couple. You have your kids in the band and you work together and you have home life together what inspires you to make music because you're just around each other all the time does does that act negatively or positively on your music well we we try to actually take a lot of our our life and put it into music you know there there were there were times like on our first record we got you know, times uh, remember when we wrote the song "Drifting." We we were going through a time where I was on the road a lot, and we were just fighting like cats and dogs, and we ended up writing "Drifting." Yeah, and you know, and it was funny the way we wrote it because he was actually on the way to where were you? Cal I don't remember California or Utah, and we came up with the idea, and and then he would he flew to Texas, and then he when he got off the plane. He sent me some lyric ideas for the first verse, and then we kind of worked together with that. And then when he flew to Denver, he's you know it was like we wrote literally wrote that song while he was flying where he was going, oh, wow. and then kind of honed it in. Yeah. One of your one of my favorites that you two have done and written is "Water and Oil." Mm -hmm. That's just such a great song. Um, and did that come out of a similar kind of situation? That one, honestly, that one just. Uh, we were just trying to write a heartbreak song, and we were writing with it, uh, it did with Hillary McBride. McBride, and we just and thought, we loved the Civil Wars, and we wanted to do something duet like the Civil Wars. Yeah, kind of, you know. Yeah. And so we we that song just kind of came out, and after it, it's one of those things where after three hours you you do a work tape and you sit back and you listen and you go, whoa, yeah. where did that come from? Yeah, you know, yeah. It's great when I hear that live when I see you guys do that. Yeah, it's a great favorite. song. Yeah, it's a, such a great song. And your harmonies are so good. And you'll get a sample of that. That's because of him. He is so good with harmonies. And both of us, I mean, he loved the Carpenters and their yeah. harmonies. And Ricky Skaggs and his amazing harmonies. I was in Ricky's band for three years. And yeah. boy, you talk about that. Oh. He, he doesn't do harmonies like, like a triad <clears throat> that moves up and down. Yeah. He'll do stuff that weaves in and out, and like the high part will go low, and and they'll kind of dance around each other, and it really makes a huge difference. Ricky is probably <clears throat> one of the most underrated musical geniuses. Yes, he doesn't get credit outside of the bluegrass and traditional country world. He doesn't get credit for his musical genius. Yeah. he's just amazing. He is amazing. Yeah. he's awesome. Is that somebody that's that's kind of influenced you? Those Definitely vo vocally. Yeah. Uh, his I learned a lot. We I was in his band for three years in the '90s, and uh, we called it the Ricky Skaggs College of Knowledge. Yeah. So you just I mean the guy. I remember one time I was playing drums for him. I was the only one in the band that heard the click. We always played to a click track. Yeah. Uh, because you know bluegrassers, they're 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 it's like walking a hundred and fifty pound Saint Bernard <laughs> with a leash. You're like, whoa, yeah. slow down! <laughs> and uh, so I remember one time we were on stage and uh, we were waiting on the sound guy to do something, and uh, so he starts playing Angel on My Mind, and I thought, well, let's see how good he is. So I dialed up Angel on My Mind, and I had a foot switch, so right on the beat, I <laughs> turned the click on. And not only was he on the perfect tempo, but he stayed with the click, not hearing the click, wow. for about 25 bars. Wow. It was amazing. Wow. It was like, I, I just stood there going, 
this guy's a machine. Yeah. He's really good. Now, this goes to your influences, too, because you've toured with Ricky. You were a longtime drummer for Reba. Mm -hmm. You're currently winding up Alabama's run. Mm -hmm. um, all those musical inspirations have to come together and, and you're taking the best bits from all of that and bringing it not only as a writer but as an artist and performer. Right, yeah, that's exactly right. And uh, and then on top of that, you've got session work yeah. Yeah. with yeah. the songwriters, which well, is just that, really... Yeah, and in, in that I get to hear the best of the best of the best, see where the bar is, right. and then go, well, we better get our music either up there or past it, or we don't have a chance. Are there any times where you're thinking, yeah, we're doing pretty good, and then you get into a session like that, and you come home, and it's like, shit. Well, we, I did, uh, about two months ago, I did a record for an artist named Rumor, right. and she, uh, she's been on, like, Daryl's Daryl's place. Yeah. Uh, she is unbelievable. And she somehow found out about our music during the three days that we were recording. Mm -hmm. And we ended up, but at the end of the, the thing, uh, she ended up asking us to do uh, some backing vocals on three of the songs as wow. Lost Hollow. So wow. we're gonna get Bill as Lost Hollow. But I remember we were, we were doing, the whole record, of this particular record, is a, a Hugh Presswood songbook. So it's, they're all Hugh Presswood songs. And I remember us, we were listening to a song called Oklahoma Stray. And at the end of the song, there was not oxygen in the whole room because everybody had gone, oh. wow. and, and I mean, you're talking about a room full of, you know, some of them older than, way older than me that have done way more sessions than me. You're talking the crustiest, most cynical musicians on the planet. Just yeah, cream of the almost, crop. Almost. <laughs> oh yeah, no. We're talking amazing players, and 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 you know, crying and listening to this song and thinking that is where the bar is set. You've got to write a song at least approaching that. Right. Yeah. And boy, if you ever go on YouTube and, and look up Oklahoma Straight and listen to the lyric, it will blow your mind. It'll blow your mind. And that's that's what we try to write towards. We try to write songs that are that good. Then why don't we hear a song and we'll talk more? Yeah, let's do right. it. You want to you want to do the title cut? Yeah, let's do the yeah. title cut. Okay. All right. So this is almost from the Steve Martin <laughs> thing where it says it's impossible to do a sad song with a banjo. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of the same with a, with a ukulele. Try to do a sad song with it. Don't get the pressure. <laughs> <in>. Yes. <laughs> the double whammy of the uh, ukulele and harmonica. <laughs> we had an accordion to make it. <laughs> uh, you know, actually, they're, they're, when we don't take a band out, yeah. I have a kick drum. Yeah. So literally, on Looking for Happy, I'll be playing the kick drum, the uke, and the harmonica at the same time. And I play nothing. You're like the guy that's on the street corner. Yeah, he is. I call him Dick Van Dyke. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. he's got the British accent to go, just like yeah. Dick Van Dyke. Yeah, really bad British <laughs> Alright, so. Alright. Okay, I've got to do this, sorry. Give me a second. This is a board that I promise. Ukuleles are finicky. So much better. Alright. Ready?
Because we're the creatives, yeah. but like we're talking all the other stuff, all the other like stuff. the booking and yeah. yeah, that stuff. We're just not really good at that. But um, but this brings us joy, and so it's not hard to find it. Um, and it's the best when your kids are on stage with you yeah. and watching them, because um, they're all so ridiculously talented as well, and, and, you and don't seeing what they're going to do. No, we don't. No. You just have to tell them, hey, I'll let you live for another day. Like, yeah. I could take you out and make another that looks just like you. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we just did a trip to New York, uh, and we took the three youngest kids, um, and it was it was fun. We had a blast. They're good travelers, and they're just, they're great. They're just, they're great to be around, and they're, they're just, it's, it's such joy for me. I love performing with them, yeah. all of them. And then hopefully at, at our CD release party, we will have most of them with us. Yeah, I, so, I'll be there for that. I'm yeah, looking forward to it. I'm looking, we're very excited. It, is it a big deal to do these kind of things in a time where albums have become almost useless? They're just merch for most people, but you're doing a CD, you've got a full album to release and push and sell is that cool? It, it's, th this has been, um, well this record has kind of been a comedy of errors for its second. Yes. It was supposed to have been out about two years ago and then stuff happened and then we pushed it back another two months and stuff happened. And, but in the meantime, we've, we've written so many new songs that ended up on the record. Oh, that's great. Which, uh, you know, the, and, and honestly, this is our fourth record and I've, I'm very proud of all of our records, but this one we're, we're the most proud of. And we just, we think we put a lot of our life's blood into this. Yeah. It's gotta be hard switching gears from studio work for other people, being on the road for more other people, 
and then coming on and having to squeeze in your own project. It helps to have uh, ADD and schizophrenia. <laughs> and I speak At least for, ADD. And I speak for everyone inside of me. <laughs> so, you're never alone with me. This is never alone. <laughs> Not That's why he's an introvert. It's just a joke. <laughs> We're not making fun. It's a, no, no. Cute humor is still allowed, right? Yeah, we do. We still do humor. And yes. It, it kind of can be offensive sometimes. But, awesome. <laughs> but the people that are offended don't watch us. But the people that love that humor, hi. Hi. <laughs> you are our people. Yeah. Uh, that's another thing too about international audiences. They're less offended by things. You can still be funny and. Mm -hmm. It's without having to worry about saying the wrong we, thing. We, yeah. we don't take ourselves too seriously. You know, we're, we're, just, we're not precious about it. No. You can't. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, no. none of us are doing rocket scientists. Yeah. It's rocket science. Or speaking English, apparently. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> English. <laughs> <laughs> I went to school to learn how to talk to it. Uh, well, you know what they say? Uh, some people have a way with words, and some people know how to wait. Another Steve Martin yes. classic. <laughs> <laughs> we could just do the Paul Steve Martin catalog. We could. It's, it's, it's shit. appropriate. Forget the music. We're just going to do shtick today. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and shtick happens. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so you've got another song on here, uh, and the video for it, you said, is, is something really special. It is. You want to explain it? You know, I will. Lucy, so, Lucy, do that so Lucy. Um, so when we set out to do this project, um, we wanted to do publicity and promotion. And so we did a crowdfunding back in February. And you, we had several tiers. And one of the tiers was you could write a song with us. Mm -hmm. And you could either do, we do a guitar vocal or you could do a full production. Mm -hmm. So part, several weeks in, a friend of mine from high school called. From Colorado and said I want to do that tier I want a full production but this is what I want and he was very specific and he said there was and I follow we're friends on Facebook so I've seen some stuff so there was a woman that just this past Christmas named Sancy Shaw right. that they were um, they're from Steamboat actually in Clark that area in Colorado she's a teacher mother of four right and they were in <coughs> Denver area um, for Christmas visiting family. Right. And her daughter, Charlie, was not feeling well. So on Christmas Eve, they knew everything would be closed on Christmas, so they, they decided to go to one of the minute clinics. And um, they went, and on the way back, uh, they were hit head on by a drunk driver. Right. Sansi was killed, and Charlie was severely injured. Wow. Like, like <clears throat> Sansi, Charlie barely survived. Yes. The woman that hit them was a four-time convicted she was a repeat offender she was killed in the accident as well right and so Char charlie was in the hospital for months mm -hmm. got out went back in um and now is doing rehab and she's she's doing rehab she's you know had, had brain damage and mm -hmm. and she's just the sweetest most beautiful little six-year-old girl you'll see in the video so he was very specific he said i want it affected the whole community. It made the news because of the repeat offender. That's a problem in Colorado. Mm -hmm. So um, he said, I, we want, I, want you, I want to write a song about that, but I want it to be positive. No challenge there. No challenge there. <laughs> wow. So we set it aside and finished the crowdfunding. And, uh, and then my grandmother had passed away. So life, and then, so two weeks after she passed away, um, <clears throat> we were like, let's sit down. Let's do this. And I had watched, Greg sent me pictures, uh, video of her funeral. Um, they have a Facebook page to support this. And so we, um, I got all the information I could get and came up with line ideas. And so we called Greg and we said, okay, we're gonna write the song. And he let us have free reign. He just gave us all the information. We, we, we knew the song had to be positive, but you know, it, it, we had like hints, like, you know, I wanted to say like, like a path to fall or something like that. Yeah. And so we sat down to write it and we realized, you know, we don't have enough. I need something to sink my teeth into mm -hmm. as a writer. So we called him and said, Greg, tell us, tell us more. There's something you haven't, you know, we're, we're trying to find like even just a title. Yeah. He said, well, they are, <clears throat> there's a group of people selling t-shirts and hats, hats mm -hmm. that say shine on. And I went, 
That's Boom, it. There it is. That was it. <laughs> and literally, the song wrote itself in three hours. It did. Wow. Sent it to Greg, just a guitar vocal, and he. I mean, we've all we've all cried over this song. Well, and we and and we never considered. You know, it wasn't a guarantee that if you write a song with a song the crowd funding that it would go on the record. In fact, we didn't really consider that we were going to put any of them on the record because we, you know. Right. But we fell in love with the song, and we thought. And we love the message. <clears throat> we sent it to Brett. Uh, Sansi's widower, yeah. and they just fell in love with cry. You know, it's very emotional, and uh, it turns out that Sansi and Brett and the family, they they were just a beautiful family, and yeah. so they would pose, they would be models in these videos. You know, in uh, real estate. In Steam, yeah. Steamboat Springs yeah. is a very highfalutin ski town. Yeah. You know, very you know. Where the stars go to play. Yeah, a bunch of you know, so. Whenever somebody would want to sell a ten million dollar house, they bring a video crew and make a video of it, and almost a little movie about it. And so we were able to talk, to to reach out to the videographers that did this, and ask them to send us the raw footage. And we built a music video with Sansi in it, and we shot our our footage here, uh, close right. to where we live, and uh, and then we built this music video and. Had no idea that it would that it would impact people the way it did, but uh, and we weren't even going to release it. It was um, we we had told our, our PR folks in the UK about it, and they said, "Tommy, <laughs> there's my bad accent again. <laughs> did you know that August is uh, National Drunk Driver Victim Awareness Month in the UK? We really want to to put this video out. We think this would be great." And we thought. Okay, so we finished the video, sent it to him. Um, immediately got. Uh, all well, well, we we because we did it over there, we had to do it over here as well. Yeah, so we so we gave yeah. the video yeah. to to Greg and Brett. Uh, Greg was our co co writer on it that came up with the idea, and uh, <clears throat> so we we released it this past Friday around one thirty. Mm -hmm. By that evening, like. I think it was eight hours. We had had ten thousand views and almost three hundred shares. Wow! In eight hours, and today I haven't I haven't checked recently, but we were about we were a few hundred shy of hitting fifty thousand today on Facebook, and almost nine hundred shares, and that's a hundred percent organic, no ads taken out, and uh, uh, it's so funny. I, I sent it to Teddy Gentry, you know, one the guy from Alabama. And he texted me back, and he said, he didn't even read the backstory, so he didn't even understand what it was about. He just called me and said, I, "I'm crying." He got me crying. Wow. So. Well, then um, I think we should do the song so okay. we can make everybody there cry as well. Yes. <laughs> and me being the cold, heartless one. Well, <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> All right. So you're watching the National Access Show with Cam and my special guest, Lost Hollow. And this uh, this is dedicated to uh, to all the the what are they, what are they called? Sh uh, what is Greg called? The sh I don't know. Shine on Nation. Oh, Shine on Nation. Yeah, yeah. And uh, also to to our our crowd, which is called called the Hollers. So. <laughs> Days we hiked those mountains. You 
would take my hand, I'd follow as you lead the way. You could name the wildflowers while we talked and laughed for hours, and the path was lit by the smile on your face. send us a message and said that he works with a group she works with a group that are victims yeah mm -hmm. and um, she actually has played the video for them and it really she helped said them. it was very emotional and they you know, it, it actually in a helped, positive way helps yeah. them uh, you know deal with what they're going through yeah so. Uh, so people can get that on your Facebook page yeah or our YouTube or our YouTube yeah. yes and if they get it on the um, face, or no, no, if they want to purchase the download for the song, yeah. um, they can go to our website and 100%, uh, they can donate whatever, and 100% will go to um, the Sansi Shaw Scholarship Fund. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that's www.losthollowband.com. Uh, yeah. And, and we've raised, uh, gosh, about $2,400 so far. Wow, excellent. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. That, it's so neat that, that, and I find that it's happening more and more these days, that music is making that connection to help people, probably more than it has. You know, the big one's got the headline, we are the world, and yeah. all that craziness in the 80s, but then it kind of died off. And yeah. It seems a lot of artists that I talk to are, are using their music to help heal others and, and do things like that. Yeah. So. And that's what our goal is. We just want to tell stories and help people deal with whatever they're dealing with, whether it's positive or harsh, you know. And there, there's all there's always a surprise song on every record right. that that you you know you kind of pick your favorites. 
and this one has like jumped out and it, it, it really just like I said kind of happened by accident and and sometimes you know we got God puts things in your drops things in your lap and says here you know we're going to do it this way you know but that so often happens where you know after I worked in advertising for a long time everybody's we got to create a viral video and it's well that's really easier to say than it is to do right. because so many of the great viral videos have been accidental mm -hmm. and that people have just latched onto. When you try and contrive something that people will latch onto, it usually falls flat on its face. Right. So it's the same sort of thing. You've come up with something that you thought, you know, it wasn't A, good, ever going to be on the record, and then it's on the record, and now the video's right. huge, and it's a complete accident. It is. And it really is. It's great. So you yeah. can make it go viral by watching it and sharing. Oh, you need to. You see, I'm serious. To watch the video. Yeah. It's it's another one of those things where after we we did it, we kind of stepped back and went. I'm not taking any credit for this whatsoever. Yeah. Cool. It's just it's, it's, it's window opens up. Boom, there it is. <laughs> kind of like a Monty Python. Except. Except uh, instead of spam, it's a beautiful song. Yeah, everybody expects the Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't don't get me going down that hole. I'll start. I know, so here. I met when I worked in London. I met a guy that was the voice of God oh in Monty Python's. Uh, oh, the, the Holy Grail. No, not the Holy Grail. It was oh, Life of Brian. Life of Brian. Yeah. <laughs> and that was to me like meeting. God himself. Yeah, <laughs> really? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. It's a radio <laughs> award thing, and we were there, and I was just talking to this guy at the bar, and I'm like, your voice sounds really familiar. Yeah, I'm God. <laughs> <laughs> and he owns it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we, we did a thing in That's the fabulous. UK. Um, we, we did a, it was like a little network <clears> party, <throat> and they actually made us get up and stand up on a coffee table and sing, yeah. which they'd never done that before. And at that party was this six foot ten massive giant of a person, and somebody nudged me and said, "Because I'm I'm a Harry Potter yeah. nerd. It's I'm sorry, I know I'm too old to be a Harry Potter nerd. <laughs> I've been to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter in London four times. Oh, four? I thought it was more. Four times. Mm. And, and uh, you've obviously been to King's Cross Station. Oh I've, yes, I did it all. I've done it all. I've been to some <laughs> of the castles. Anyway, so this guy <clears throat> was Hagrid in the last movie oh, when wow. he was carrying the body of Harry. Yeah, totally. He he was Hagrid. And I'm like, I'm not sure we can be friends after this. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll go back to my. We'll go back to my. <laughs> I have a special request. Could you do water and oil? Okay. If we can stand up. Okay. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. a song I gotta stand up for. All right. Shinon's one too. <laughs> but he writes these songs for me that kick my butt. I'll stand up too. That's right. Lost all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Ready? I guess I am.
And your eyes are empty Oh, there's so much more I want to say I want to reach you, God I miss you But it's too late got some really special guests coming. We've got uh, John Ford Coley, he's going to get up wow. saying, uh, uh, Johnny Reed, probably the biggest artist in Canada. In Canada. Yeah, yeah, he's amazing. Uh, uh, Ted Gentry's coming up Ted for Gentry's it. Ted Gentry's going to come up and sing. Um, Paul Overstreet, we're thinking. Mm -hmm. Wow. Need to confirm, yeah. But, um, That's going to be a big show. Make sure you catch that August 27th. Yes. Mm -hmm. At the Basement East. And uh, no doubt you'll be able to buy hard copies of the CD. Yes, as well. for sure. Uh, what What have you got planned other than that? Looking past that, what have you got going on? UK tour dates. Yeah, we're heading to the UK um, second yes. half of October. Yes, and we're going to be doing a record release show over there as well right. at the Bedford in Balham in London. Oh, yes. that's, a, that's a great venue. Oh, yeah. it's a great venue, yeah. and they've just redone it. Yeah, they spent about stunning. six seven million pounds. Oh, it's beautiful. It's incredible. And then uh, towards the end of the trip, it looks like we might be doing a show at the Troubadour yes. in Sweet. London. And the Troubadour is, a little bit of trivia for you, is where the peace sign came from. Oh, wow. Because the peace sign is actually a map of three ley lines that converge, and then they just drew a circle around it, and that became the peace sign. Wow. And it was at the Troubadour. Me. Yeah. So, uh, tour dates and everything you can find on your website. You can yep. keep people up to date on your yes, for sure. socials. Yes. Really thrilled that you came in today. And Thank you so much. Time. I love having you guys in. We you have, have a blast. We do. Yes, we would love to. Um, and make sure you go out and catch Lost Hollow anywhere you can find them in the UK, US, wherever they may be. You'll find their dates on their website. Yes. Pages can I sing one more really quick song? Yeah. <clears throat> Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lori. Happy birthday to me. Now, see, I, didn't, I didn't sing because nobody wants that to happen ever. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, then what have the Romans done for us? Body <laughs> <laughs> <Bonnie> Python. <laughs> 
thank you so much for being here. Thank you so uh, much. Oh my gosh, it was awesome. It was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, let's do this again sometime soon. Thanks for watching the Nashville Access Show with Camo, my special guest today, Lost Hollow. Make sure you check them out wherever you can find them because their music is incredible and they're cool people. See you next time.